We've set up navigation in our application. We've gone over how to navigate after actions such as logging in, and we've set up this navigation service to consolidate our navigation so we can just simply call navigate whenever we want to go to a different view model. But now let's say on this login command that we implemented last time, we get the account of the user that has just logged in. And an account, very simple object, just has an email and the username. And now that we have this account for the current user that's logged in, I want to send this account to the account view model. So let's say this account view model takes in an account and we'll put that in a field, generate that field, and now we'll get the user's name from the account's username property and we'll also get their email too. And let's rename these properties. So we'll call this username instead of name just to say consistent. And we'll also update our view real quick too. So add another grid row and we'll have another text block for the email on our account view model. And we also need to bind to username rather than name because we changed that property name. And lastly, let's update our grid rows. And there we go. So now our account view model requires an account. So we have this account when we log in. So somehow I have to pass this account to my account view model that gets created in the navigation service. But we can't do that with what we have now because the navigate method on our navigation service doesn't take in a parameter for the account that we want to pass to the account view model. So we need to support parameters in our navigation. So first I want to demonstrate how to do this without the navigation service. So we're going to get rid of this. And instead, we're just going to get our navigation store in here and directly set the current view model for the application on the navigation store. So let's get this into a field and get rid of our navigation service because it simply doesn't support parameters and we need to pass this account as a parameter. And now using our parameter is going to be very straightforward because we no longer have to go through the navigation service. All we have to do is set the current view model to a new account view model. And since we're instantiating the account view model right here, we can pass in the account of the user that has logged in and we have our navigation store here conveniently and now we have set the current view model so our view should update and we should get the correct account being displayed. Whoops, got to update our constructor. So the login command now just takes our navigation store. Alright, so let's log in and there we go, we're on the account page and our account has been set. So we have successfully passed this account as our parameter to the account view model that we set on our application. And just setting the current view model on your navigation store and instantiating your account view model right here is probably fine for most use cases. But like last time, I would like to get this into some kind of navigation service. But of course, we can't use our navigation service because we're not taking any parameters here. So we're going to create a different navigation service and this is going to be the parameter navigation service. And this is also going to have a navigate method, except this time, we're going to take in some kind of parameter. So obviously we want to be able to reuse this navigation service for multiple different view models, not just the account view model where our parameter is the account type. So that being said, this is going to have to be a generic class with some kind of T parameter type. So for the case of the account view model, this T parameter would be the account. And now we're going to need our navigation store in here so we can set the current view model for the application. So let's get that into a field. And similar to our navigation service where we took a callback to create the view model, that we wanted to set as the current view model, we're gonna have a similar callback except this func is going to take in the navigation parameter. So let's just copy this. And instead of just returning a T view model, it's also going to take in a T parameter. And we'll see how that's used in a second, but we also need to have a T view model type in here. And same thing as the navigation service and even the navigate commands, we need to constrain the T view model to be a view model base. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to set the navigation store current view model property because that is a view model base. And now we can execute our create view model callback and pass in the parameter that gets passed to this navigate command and we'll get our view model back. And we'll see how this is used in a second, but let's generate our constructor to get these dependencies that we need. So now in our login command, now we need a parameter navigation service that takes in an account as the parameter and will give us back an account view model. And we'll call this navigation service and create a field for that. And we no longer need our navigation store in here because we're not gonna be setting the current view model on our navigation store. That's all gonna be done inside of the parameter navigation service. So let's actually navigate using that service and pass in our account parameters. Now this is much simpler. We get our account and then we navigate 
and pass that account as the parameter. And now we have to update our login command, so we need a parameter navigation service that takes in an account as a parameter and gives us back the account view model that we want to navigate to. So let's instantiate that. That requires our navigation store, which we have, and we also need a callback function that takes in a parameter and will return an account view model. And in this case, the parameter is going to be our account type, so we can simply pass that in to the account view model. And we have our navigation store here as well, so we can pass that in. And let's pass in the navigation service to our login command, and we should be good to test this out. Again, I mentioned this last time, it's kind of a pain to set up all these dependencies, but it will be much easier to manage with dependency injection, which I'll show off later in this series. So now I will log in, and we still renavigate, except this time we're using our parameter navigation service, and it reads much better in our login command. All we have to do is simply navigate and pass our account. So that's actually one way that we can handle passing parameters in an MVVM navigation application. But maybe we don't have to directly pass this account to the account view model. How else could we do this? Well, let's say in this case, this is actually a pretty good example, but the account might be something that you actually store as application state. And there's only one account for the application because usually only one user can be logged in. So in this case, you might have a store for this. So we're going to create an account store to store that application state regarding the account. So let's get a field for the account. We'll call this current account, actually. And let's create a getter and setter property for that current account so that we can get and set it outside of the account store. So the getter will just return the current account field. And then in the setter for now, we'll just set the current account to the value passed into the setter. So since we now have this account store, we can reference that account store in our account view model. And we'll keep that as a field in our account view model. So update all of these to the account store. And now the username and email will come from the account store. And we store the current account on there. So we can get the email and username from these properties. But of course, the current account could be null. So let's account for that with a null conditional after our current account. So if the current account is null, then we're not going to try and access this username property. We'll just return null and show nothing on the screen. So now that we take this account store in our constructor rather than the account, in our login command, we're not actually going to pass the account as a parameter because the account view model doesn't need the account. Instead, we have to pass the account to our account store where the current account for the application is stored. So that being said, first, we can go back to our regular navigation service. We don't need parameters anymore. And this will be for the account view model and no longer pass in the account. Next up, we're going to need our account store in here so we can update the current account for the application, generate a field for that. And now when we get our account for the logged in user, we simply set that account as the current account. And then we navigate to the account view model, which will grab the current account that we just set in our account store. So this is kind of like view model communication which is another topic that I made a video on because we use this account store to communicate between view models what the current account for the application should be. And now we actually have to update our login command instantiation so we're no longer using a parameter navigation service. So you do not need the account parameter so this callback won't take the parameter and instead our create view model callback will just instantiate an account view model with the navigation store and we also need our account store in here. And we're going to get this account store through the constructor so let's get a parameter for that. And we also need to pass that account store to the login command. And we conveniently already have that account store. And last but not least, the account store needs to be passed to our login view model that we instantiate when we navigate to the login page. Let's pass that in and get that for the home view model constructor. Again, this is all a pain because we don't have dependency injection set up. And now our home view model needs an account store, which we already have getting through this constructor so we can simply pass that in so many things to update here and last but not least we have finally funneled all the way up to our one startup where the application actually starts and now we just need to instantiate our single account store for the application and we can finally pass that in to our initial view model the home view model so now same thing we can log in and our current account is set for the application except this time instead of using a parameter we went through our account store, set the current account for the application after login right here, and then simply navigated to our account view model that grabbed the current account. So those are actually two ways we can support parameters in navigation. So if you're dealing with application state like accounts, maybe you just set up an account store. But otherwise, if your view model that you're navigating to needs some kind of specific parameter that isn't necessarily 
application state, then you can simply use a parameter navigation service that we implemented earlier. So hopefully this is helpful for your own MVVM navigation applications. If you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comment section. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.